If you are not outraged, you have not been paying attention. The income inequality in the United States has not been this pronounced in over a century. The middle class doesn't exist anymore, and the new working poor cannot continue for much longer. The top 10% has 50% of the country's income. And the top 1% has 20% of the income. While a quarter of all American workers struggle on wages of less than $10 an hour putting them below the poverty line. Meanwhile the salaries of the CEOs of top corporations are often in the billions of dollars. Today there are 2,200 billionaires in America. This income inequality is global. The wealthiest 1% of the world's population controls 40% of the world's wealth. We are at a point in which the capitalist system, which has been the growing dominant system for the last 300 years, and wanted to present itself in contradiction to feudalism and slavery, as the system that creates a mass of the middle class that lifts everybody up. And what we have now, is that it has become the global system that is the exact opposite. It has reproduced the kinds of grotesque inequalities that we associate with everything from the Versailles Palace of the late King Louis back to the pharaohs of ancient Egypt. It is a stunning expose of an economic system that couldn't deliver what it promised. And now wants to distract everybody from this harsh reality. This is the a significant measure of a capitalist system by its own claims, and it can't deliver. That's why we're besieged with economic and political theater, anti-immigration and tariffs, all that kind of stuff blaming foreigners for anything. To get us away from confronting an economic a system that doesn't work for the majority of the people. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. Thank you. Not only this capitalism does not work, but the assault is being exacerbated. As we saw with the new tax code. The new tax code really is a kind of explosive excess. It's when you've crossed the line, and finally it is so grotesque that even those who didn't want to see are forced to see. We have had 30 to 40 years in which corporations have paid fewer taxes than they ever did. They have made more money than they ever did before. They have been able to keep wages stagnant, while the, the productivity of labor rose. This is the last moment historically that they needed another big gift. Let alone at the expense of the very people whose wages have been stagnant. To give them a tax bust of this sort, basically reducing from 35% to 20% as a 40% cut. This kind of crazy excess does remind us of the late Louis in France before the French Revolution. When the level of excess reached the explosive social dimensions. And I think that's where we are. What about that a moment in American history, let's call it the golden age of labor right after World War II. When, capitalism took credit for and, we did have for a period of a couple of decades a well-compensated working class. Working class could be part of the middle class. The irony which people don't want to remember, yes that's true. I'd like to explain to you how the figures that they use to justify, what they call a recovery are, in fact, fictional. Yeah, there's a number of ways in which this is done. You know, at any moment there are an immense array of economic statistics some of them make it look like the future might be a little bit better others make it look like the future look and grim. A reasonable approach tries to weigh these. But if you don't do analysis you do advertising or ideological more than you only look at the one. And you pretend the other ones don't exist. So bear with me, if I point out some of the data that don't show that this is a recovery. For example, the unemployment number that they love to talk about. This is the way unemployment numbers are gathered in America, which so few people understand it. You ask a lot of people, two questions, are you working? If they say yes, they're employed. If they say no, you ask them a second question, are you looking for work, or are you not? If you say I am looking for work, you're counted as unemployed. If you say, I'm not looking, you are counted as out of the labor force. You are not counted as on the employee. So you don't need to be a statistical genius to understand that if over the last 10 years a significant number of people gave up looking. Because it's too disgusting, because of the jobs they were offered was so inferior to what they had before, that the jobs they were offered were so insecure as to make their family life as impossible. So they either went back to school or went into the illegal economy or began to live off their friends relative and neighbors. Then you think the unemployment rate went down. As if this were an improvement. But the actuality is it's a deterioration. And we know that because, what it does is, 
it leaves of the smaller number of people in the labor force to support the entire population. And that's fundamentally a bad thing. But it also does things like, if you are 28 hours a week at Walmart, which is the average hourly work week at Walmart, you're still below the poverty line. And the Walton family which is making $11,000 an hour will quite generously give you forms for food stamps. Because you qualify. So we get to subsidize them. And even if you're working one hour a week, you're counted as employed. Yes, you are. You've put in the temporary category or part-time category. There are endless games that are being played. The bottom line is most observers admit that the quality of the job, its security, its benefits, its impact on your physical and mental health, all of that has been going down even as the wages have remained stagnant. So that by any of those measures we're not in a recovery. We're in an ongoing decline. It's happening to the economies in Western Europe, Japan, and the United States. That's why an angry working class is looking for ways to express and change its circumstance. If we don't learn the lesson of the Great Depression, we're going to see this system spinning out of control and destroying itself in the very way its critics have for so long foreseen it. Which will mean that the dollar will no longer be the reserve currency. We will see the creation of a multipolar world. Which means, instead of this kind of gradual decline of the American empire, it would really mean a pretty catastrophic economic meltdown for the United States. Right what we saw some time ago, when Trump announced his big tariffs on China. We saw the stock market dropped 700 points in one day. That's a sign of the anxiety, the danger even in the minds of capitalists about where this is going. Just as we saw Warren Buffett and others say years earlier, you can't keep taxing us this way, when I pay less than my secretary. Because it is an unsustainable thing. As we approach the end of the second decade of the 21st century, the long history of the American empire seems to be coming to a decline. The world currency role made US financial hegemon. This power, together with the IMF and World Bank, enabled the US to plunder foreign resources the way vanishing American resources had been looted. Countries are starting to abandon the US dollar as the currency of international transactions and arranging to settle their international accounts in their domestic currencies. China's Silk Road encompasses Russia with much of Asia in a trade bloc independent of the Western financial system. Other countries hoping to escape US control are turning to Russia and China to achieve sovereignty from Washington. These developments will reduce the demand for dollars and impair US financial hegemony. Alternatives to the World Bank will remove areas of the world from the reach of US plunder. What is left will be a ruin, as confirmed by Dr. Paul Craig Roberts in his article American Decline. The United States seems to have an economic crisis every 10 years or so. They are difficult to eradicate because their causes are different. But the results are always the same. They include high unemployment, near bank collapse, and an economic contraction. These are all symptoms of a recession. To start planning for your future for the long term, here are the top predictions that will most affect the United States and your own personal economy over the next decade. Prepare yourself for the financial crisis with these predictions. By taking the time to understand these predictions, you may be able to better plan for your future. The best thing to do is to stay focused on your financial well-being. Continue to improve your skills and chart a clear course for your career. If you've invested in the stock market, be calm during any pullback. Plummeting commodity prices, including gold, oil, and coffee, will return to the mean. All in all, an excellent time to reduce debt, build up your savings. The US economy will boom then bust. The Fed predicts that economic growth as measured by the gross domestic product will slow to 6% in 2021 it will be 4% in 2022 and 1.8% in 2023. That's within the ideal range of 2-3%. At that level could create a recession by 2022. It could set off a speculative boom and bust cycle. US manufacturing is forecast to increase faster than the general economy. The MAPI Foundation says increased capital growth and higher exports will boost manufacturing. It predicts production will grow by 3.9% in 2021, and will slow slightly to 2.4% in 2022, and 1.9% in 2023. The federal debt will increase. The US debt exceeded $28 trillion in 2021 and had remained stable after sequestration kicked in. With that action, Congress required a mandatory 10% federal budget cut through 2021. 
In the US the debt to GDP ratio is 133%, a level that is not sustainable. As interest rates rise, it will increase the interest payments on the debt. It's above the 77% tipping point recommended by the International Monetary Fund. The government promised to reduce the debt, but so far, its policies will increase it by 5.6 trillion. The Tax Cut and Jobs Act alone, $1 trillion supply-side economics, say that lowering business taxes frees up more funds to hire more workers. But it doesn't work when the maximum tax rate is below 50%, according to the Laffer curve. Instead, it just adds to the debt. Disagreements over how to reduce the debt may translate into a debt crisis. If the debt ceiling needs to be raised in the long term balancing the budget means spending cuts. Since they cut taxes, Social Security pays for itself, and Medicare partially does, at least for now, as Washington wrestles with the best ways to address the debt. Uncertainty arises over tax rates benefits. Federal programs and businesses react to this uncertainty by hoarding cash, hiring temporary instead of full-time workers, and delaying significant investments the dollar will resume its loss of value. The value of the dollar will continue to decline. Prior to 2015, Forex traders were betting on a strong dollar when the Fed announced that it would raise interest rates. Now that it's happened, traders realize rates are only rising slowly. They will find another currency to bet on. Foreign investors will become more concerned about US debt. They fear that the US wants the dollar to decline, so that the relative value of its national debt is less. They will diversify their portfolios with more non-dollar denominated assets such as the euro. A weak dollar increases import prices, which contributes to inflation. And increases oil and gas prices. It also lowers export prices spurring economic growth. The value of the dollar will continue to experience dips and swells, affecting everything you buy. The US global power is declining. Prepare yourself by taking the time to understand these predictions. The best thing to do is to stay focused on your financial well-being. Continue to improve your skills and chart a clear course for your career. If you're invested in the stock market be calm during any pullback. All in all an excellent time to reduce debt build up your savings. Welcome to the divided slaves of America. This was the Atlantis report. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.